Why, hello everyone. My name is Cece and I am the Genetic Canary. Today I thought we would go over this study that's about the ketogenic diet and Huntington's disease. I found it really, really fascinating to see that they're studying the keto diet for HD. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I really thought I was the only one on this diet for a long time, but really, they're starting to study it and use it more and more for HD. Here's a 41-year-old man who used this diet to reverse so many parts of his disease, and I just wanted to go over some of his results. Okay, so this is the case of a 41-year-old man with progressive and deteriorating Huntington's disease, who decided on a time-restricted ketogenic diet for 48 weeks. His caregiver was fed up with his anger. I'm not sure if she, if they had any physical altercations, but it seemed like to me in the study that I read, she was ready to leave him. And so this is really fantastic to see that he improved so much that he was willing to stay on the diet. So let's talk about his improvements. His motor symptoms improved by 20, by 52%, 52%. That's amazing. His act, his daily activities and his daily living improved by 28%. His composite unified HD rating scale shows he improved by 20%. His related, his HD related behavior problems of apathy, disorientation, anger, and irritability improved by a whopping 50 to 100%. That is huge. And his mood related quality of life improved by 25%. Now, it goes on to say that his cognition did not improve. His weight remained stable and there were no significant adverse effects. I repeat, there were no significant adverse effects. Now, in this video, I would like to discuss why I believe his cognition did not improve as mine did. A lot of people, when they get on these diets, tend to move along sort of the same pathways and keep some of the diet, invi diet advice that we've been given in the past in mind as we move forward. For example, some people have been told that low fat is the best way to go. Oh, I'm going to stop talking about low fat and just for just a moment and tell you what I'm doing here. I'm looking up words that I don't quite know the meaning of so that I could get the meaning of them and get the full understanding of the article. I really suggest that you do that. This is about mitochondrial health. And that's really why I want to talk about why low fat isn't the way to go. So there's a few reasons why that's not good. A low fat diet actually doesn't provide your brain with the fat that it needs. Our brains are made out of like 80% fat. And because I know that, I know that I need fat because I need to feed my brain. So that's why my diet is a high fat ketogenic diet, not a low fat. There's a study that I recently posted on a short video on muscles. So you might want to go check that video out if you haven't seen it already. And that video talks about how we have certain pathways that carbohydrates and fat both can use. So when carbohydrates are out of the picture, it allows for more fat to go through. But what say you're just but let's say that you're just eating chicken without the fat, like a chicken breast. 
that is not enough fat for anybody to eat. So if you're eating a ketogenic diet and you're mostly eating chicken breasts without the skin, you're not getting enough fat. If you'd like to eat that, sure, go ahead. And that's something that you really enjoy. I would suggest making it with bacon or making it with butter or lard. Because what that does is that increases the fat content. But you also have to eat that butter or lard if it's not bacon, right? Because with the bacon, you're eating the bacon and you're eating the meat and the fat that's in the bacon. But some people don't like to eat pats of butter or pats of lard but that's really what you should do. So if you're making bacon on a regular basis, I would go ahead and suggest saving some of that fresh made lard, you know what I mean, in a jar in your kitchen and using that to cook with. People really should be using that to cook with instead of canola oil or any seed oils. And this includes, yes, coconut oil. Coconut is a seed, it's a big one, but it is, and so I would recommend that you not use that. Same with avocado oil. Mm -mm. It's just not the same. And so you really need that pathway to be open for animal fats, and animal fats will do that so that you can absorb the proper nutrients. For example, if you go and watch that video on muscles, I talk about how a lot of kidney doctors say that you shouldn't have potassium or phosphorus. Well, why is that? Why shouldn't you have potassium or phosphorus? Phosphorus is the backbone of your DNA. Why would you want to skip that, right? Well, according to kidney doctors, you should. And that's the proper diet for someone who's on dialysis. Well, why would you just be um, peeing out so many large amounts of that that kidney doctors would notice it and say, oh, you need to have a diet lower in fat and lower in these things. Well, it's because that person is not absorbing those minerals because that person probably was on a low fat diet for most of their lives like we've been taught. But fat and cholesterol are not bad for us. The video right before the muscles video will show you that. Cholesterol is essential to being able to open up that pathway that carbohydrates would normally use. And that pathway is imperative for you being able to absorb all of your vitamins and minerals. Because for example, if you watch the video before this about dairy and about why this diet actually heals Huntington's disease. I talk a lot about dairy in that video. If you want to absorb thiamine, which most people with Huntington's disease are deficient in, then you also need potassium. If you're not getting that potassium, it's because you're eating too low fat. Your diet needs to have higher fat in order to absorb that potassium. Just like your diet has to have higher fat in order to absorb the phosphorus from the mussels that I, that I eat on a regular basis. I find that that dish actually helps me feel the absolute best. I feel like cognitively my brain works a lot better. My body works a lot better. I have less pain overall during the day. Um, for some of you that really have a hard time sleeping because of the pain at night, I would suggest that you eat something fatty for your dinner at night, just like you should eat something fatty for your breakfast in the morning. Both of those things will really help you and help your body. It helps your joint pain, it helps your muscular pain, especially if you're eating phosphorus, which is really good for muscles, not to mention that it's good for our DNA. So in Huntington's disease, our mRNA misreplicates. It misreplicates because we can't absorb certain minerals. Why can't we absorb those certain minerals? Because sugar and carbohydrates are taking over that same pathway that fat needs in order for us to absorb those vitamins and minerals. And so that's something that really everyone should know about. As you can see, I'm going through the entire study 
bit by bit. I'm reading the entire study. And any words I don't know, I look them up. Now, I've been reading studies since 2014, so I've gotten a lot better at reading studies. So if you haven't been reading medical studies that long and know the vernacular, the different words and what they mean, then I would suggest that you look them up. I actually would look up so many words in the very beginning of my journey. And even though I kind of knew what mitogenesis was from my research, I looked it up anyway to be double sure because I hadn't seen that word in a while. And so that's something that you should know. Your mitochondria actually needs fat and, and they you need fat. What is another word for fat? Choline. Why do you need choline? Because you need acetylcholine in order to process, in order for your mitochondria to be really healthy. And if you don't have that fat in your body, then your mitochondrial health is not doing well. Your cell isn't being able to absorb the minerals it needs to make brand new cells that are completely healthy. So in Huntington's disease, we have a lot of bad cells that die off in clumps and then they just they just die off. And so that's why we have a lot we have a really hard time in our health. So really, I fully believe that Huntington's disease can be healed by healing our metabolic disease, which comes on first, and Huntington's disease. The first disease that I, or the first thing I had to take a pill for um, that my doctor prescribed was thyroid disease. And that thyroid disease has to do with your hormonal health and your metabolic health, just like diabetes. And so those are all things your hormones actually need lots of fat in order to heal. Now, you have to do all of these things in conjunction. If you're eating a diet, a traditional standard American diet with carbohydrates, and then you add in dietary fats, what's going to happen is you're going to increase in weight. If you're just like if you're not drinking enough water, you're going to increase in weight. These are things that your cellular structures absolutely need in order to be healthy. And so that's why the ketogenic diet really does work, not only for me, but for this 41-year-old man who probably had given up hope. How wonderful that his doctor recommended a ketogenic diet. How wonderful that they're doing studies like this now. I'm just so blown away and so happy. I am not the only one anymore. I am not the only one that will show improvement. I believe cognitively this man could show so much more improvement if he added in that dairy and that fat. I don't know for sure that he doesn't have that in his diet. I'm just assuming from reading the study that really that's why he his cognition did not improve and because it also says his weight remains stable. So for those of you that are interested in the ketogenic diet for Huntington's disease, I say go for it. But what you decide is what you decide, what you do is what matters. If you stick to it, just know that there are people like me and this 41-year-old man who are actually showing vast improvements thanks to this amazing way of eating that some people call fad diets. But did you know that the Johns Hopkins University has been doing this diet, the ketogenic diet, for over a century that's amazing, isn't it? I'll leave that information down below so you can check it out and make the decision for yourself. For now, I just want to thank you so much 
for listening to my talks. And I really hope that you have shown some improvement. If you have and you've used this diet, please leave some comments down below so that we can give hope to everyone with HD, a neurological disorder, or an autoimmune disease. Thank you so much. Have a great day.